What is going on guys? This is Mia Sin. So today I wanted to go over a few OCG deck lists because I think they're really interesting. Some of them are kind of crazy, like a little uh, too ridiculous. And you know, it works out for them sometimes, the majority of the time for some reason. Whereas in the TCG, it's always the same thing that's doing well, so it's less interesting. Also going to be covering a few Master Duel deck lists because I'm on the page, so might as well. But before we go any further, obviously make sure to smash the like and subscribe button. You're my boy, thank you so much. And also a huge shout out to my sponsors, Inspire TCG as well as Dueling Guard. They are now taking pre-orders for their chainsaw mats, binders, and art cards. And uh, again, it looks absolutely amazing. Anything that comes from Dueling Guard is always the best quality. Check them out. Again, link will be in the description box below. And use the coupon code YASIN666 for 5% off. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so I usually don't really make uh, any videos on Master Duel because uh, the game kind of bores me. But uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's interesting to see that even in a breakdown, we uh, we can see some, uh, some things that I do not understand whatsoever, like 16.67 Snake Eye. I kind of read a little bit, you know, because people don't necessarily... They're, they're not really locked into, into one deck, so they can play, like, uh, multiple decks if they really want to. So that's the reason why there's decimals. Ryan Yu uh, with Labyrinth, of course, getting first place. Why am I not surprised? It's insane. And then I think 39th or something. No, not even. 36th is uh, Nesh. So it's really nice to see a lot of TCG players because, uh, for the most part, just a lot of names that I do not recognize at all. Uh, for some um, slightly obvious reason, they're Japanese. So, uh, yeah, but everyone else, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's cool. Everybody's playing a very uh, standard deck. a little boring. Kishira, Super Heavy Samurai, Snake Eye, blah, blah, blah. Can't believe the freaking semi-limited Chandra and Stovi. Thank God I don't play that game at the moment. The Snake Eye engine is also it's extremely hilarious. They've got everything, but they don't have Bonfire. So one thing that I've been noticing, actually, I've seen a lot of deck lists that were playing like three Unicorn, one Fenrir, one Field Spell, and uh, one Birth. You don't necessarily have to play Theosis, it's just that Unicorn is so good. Even if you get Nibiru, then uh, whatever, you still have your Birth to revive back your Unicorn. And then when your opponent activates a spell card, you get to banish three cards from your opponent's graveyard while you control Unicorn, so it's it's pretty nice. Uh, or if you draw like Fenrir Birth, it's even better, and then you can normal summon the Unicorn, and yeah, it doesn't really get you a Surge because you're not playing Theosis, but whatever, you get the point. It's a cool little engine, might as well uh, take advantage of it while every single card is at one, except for Unicorn. And nothing else of value. I mean, I don't really care about Master Duel, honestly. So yeah, you can take a look. It's in the Road of the King. Let's get right into the interesting part of the video. So the OCG, uh, which again is relevant for us in the TCG. We might have the exact same thing. Main deck, the one Gamma, one Driver. Uh, yeah, okay. So if, if you get unlucky and you get the Driver, it's fine. You can just discard it for the Tenpai Dragon Field spell. It, it's logical when you think about it. If they, if they draw Gamma, then they can resolve it. Or worst case, it's just a discard fodder. Uh, Shifter, I'll re showcase some combos with Shifter so they can main deck the card, no problem. It's really good against uh, pure Snake Eyes and Far King, but you do have to hold your Shifter. Like, if you shotgun on standby, it's not it's not gonna have like full value because if they got the field spell, that they can easily play through it. Uh, by the way, this obviously also applies for the TCG in case you weren't wondering. Now, I'm gonna have to school this guy because I kept mentioning it like 20 billion times. I really don't like Phantasme when you're playing a lot of hand shops. Phantasmi is like really good with board breakers because with, with hand shops, like sometimes you draw the hand shops too late. Like Im imagine drawing into like a, a veil or like a, an imperm, it's useless. Or you can draw a veiler, but after your opponent resolves Snake Eye Ash, because then you Phantasmi when your opponent makes like a Link Creep or like um, another Link monster again when it's gonna be too late. Obviously, if you Phantasm into Nibiru, it's broken. There's not much to really Phantasmi here. I guess you can kind of Phantasm into Shifter, but Phantasm into Nibiru is broken. Phantasm into Maxi can be fine, because everybody's always trying to special summon anyways. Depends on the timing, so you have to do a lot of homework in order to play Phantasm correctly. But Phantasm into Drop Play is insane, and also you can resolve Phantasm on your own, own turn, so that's not too bad. But when you got like billions of hand shops, sometimes what happens is that use your hand shops first, and then your opponent doesn't even link summon, because there's no reason to, unless he has like full combo, and then your Phantasm is just useless. So you might as well just play other cards instead. And only one Fedora is really bold. I think I like it. Maybe TCG players will start doing that as well because it is kind of a brick. It doesn't really do anything on its own. It's it's the only 10 by dragon that just doesn't get anything started. It's a monster board, that's it. And a lot of trap cards in the side deck, but this is actually one of the normal deck lists because it's about to get crazy real soon. Uh, so this one, again, very uh, very simple. There is someone who commented on one of my videos on uh, Tenpai Dragon uh, saying, yeah, this deck gets even crazier when you play like Dragon Rulers and Destrudo. And uh, this deck doesn't use Blaster because Blaster is a good Dragon Ruler. It's really just because Gold Star can banish it and then you can search a, a Tenpai Dragon like by Dora or Zangdora. That's it. Blaster, again, e every Dragon Ruler is dog shit. Like, my bad. They can all go to three. It's fine. Um, Dark Matter Dragon is the reason why they all got banned. And Dark Matter Dragon is banned and is definitely never going to see the light of day anyways. Uh, I actually disagree with playing Gold Sark and the Blaster. It, it's the exact same thing as playing Set Rotation and a really, really bad field spell in your deck. You're adding one extra starter, but also one extra Garnet. 
It's a Garnet. If you draw it, you can't resolve set rotation or Gold Sark into Blaster if you draw the Blaster. So yeah, it's dog shit. Don't do that. And then the Destrudo, it just doesn't do much. And it makes you randomly lose to Handshap that you have no business losing to. So I also don't really understand the Destrudo. Uh, but I mean, I guess some it can kind of make sense in case you get like... I don't know, Veilert on Bidora or something, yeah, I, I guess. And then, yeah, Side Deck has even more hate for uh, Runic decks because we're going to be seeing a lot of this today. Yeah, fun for, uh, for the whole family. And with three freaking Anti-Spell and Secret Village, this deck literally has the most unwinnable uh, Runic uh, matchup in existence. And instead of going for the Necro Valley combo with like Zulkin and everything, we can see zero Zulkin here, very interesting again. Because it tries to go into Shooting Riser to send Fairy Tail Snow and then Synchro Summons for Nirvana High Paladin. And you're obviously searching the Secret Village off of the Ancient Fairy Dragon. So you got double Spellcaster Monsters. They can Kaiju the first one, then you just summon back the Fairy Tail Snow. And they cannot use any spell cards. Not too bad. And then, yeah, freaking 10 cards for... Or, or 10, 11 for freaking Runic. That, that's, that, that's just ridiculous. Oh my god. Anyways, uh, 10 by Dragon, this is where it gets a little ridiculous. I hard disagree with this. I can, I can understand the logic, but Jesus... There's just so many things that just look wrong here. So first of all, Shifter main deck. Okay, fair enough. And then we also have this Trudeau. Okay, so you're definitely not trying to mill this because it conflicts with Ravine. And then why you're playing Ravine? It means that you're going to Romulus first, which means that you're playing into Nib in a deck that doesn't lose to Nib. So you add more weaknesses to your decks. You're really trying to play it as a combo deck. There's a lack of like a combination of starters and extenders. This deck is really just like a, a gimmicky one card OTK deck with like 24 non-engine. That's really how it works, but people are trying all kinds of things. And this guy got first, so it's not like I can criticize too much, but I guess it worked out for him. Three Heat Wave in the mother freaking main deck. That is ridiculous. I, I, I just fear that TCG players will copy this and will also be main decking Heat Wave. I do not have, I do not want to be dealing with this card. And there is only one realistic way in Yu-Gi-Oh to deal with Heat Wave, and that is Cyframe Delta. So the thing is, this time by Dragon Player, who was main decking Gamma and Driver, you might as well do the same thing, but with two deltas. You might as well, because when you think about it, I, I think delta can negate spell effects as well. If it can, then it's broken, but I don't think it can. It's when your opponent activates his spell card. Yeah, never mind. So if your opponent activates Heat Wave, even if he has a second one, he can't use it again because you can only use Heat Wave at the start of the main phase one. Same thing with Extravagance. Extravagance doesn't have to be once per turn. It's already the indirectly once per turn. So yeah, you can just negate this, or you can negate Kaiser Colosseum, or I guess the Field Spell if you're like really desperate, but you can't negate the effect uh, search. So that's kind of bait. Uh, again, you can't negate the effect, only the activation. Uh, against Kaiman, I believe Kaiman is a you can only use once per turn. Let me just double check. Because that would be pretty... Nah, you can only activate. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> that's pretty bad. And they draw two Kaiman, you're screwed. Uh, nothing else that's really worth really negating, I guess. Uh, I mean, nothing else that you can negate, really. So yeah, it's, it's still a good card though, and generically usable as well, but it allows the Gamma to just make more sense, because when you're playing one good card to one bad card, it's not really good. But if this becomes a trend in the TCG or in the OCG, I can guarantee you that Cyframe Delta main deck will make sense. Right now it doesn't, because this is one ridiculous, like ludicrous deck list, but the majority, like the average is like this kind of deck list, where you're just playing like generic hand shops. And uh, potentially like three droplet being like the only board breaker as well as maybe Duster, Lightning Storm, Heavy Storm. I don't even know if this guy chooses to go first or second when he wins the dice roll. Probably first because there are six freaking floodgates and they also going second. But yeah. Oh man, I can't believe an OTK that can play Shifter and Heat Wave and everything. What is Yu-Gi-Oh turning into? Uh, Fire King, nothing interesting, so I'm gonna skip. Ten by Dragon again. Uh, there's really just nothing interesting, but I kind of disagree really hard with Desires. And again, in the TCG, we don't have to use our brains because we've got three freaking Prosperities. That makes the deck infinitely better. Oh, again, someone else in the comments told me, yeah, cut Prosperity and Tent by Dragon and play Small World instead. I'm like, why the downgrade? Prosperity is a one-card starter with, like, literally no drawback. You don't care about halving the damage when you're freaking dealing 30, 37,000 damage. That's, I could divide it by four and you're still dead. And, yeah, Small World is a neg one. So, yeah, no thank you. And I don't even know if everything bridges that well. Like, this is level 3, level 3, level 3, uh, Maxi doesn't exist, this is level 1 light. So, I mean, I, I could go Valor into Ash into, like, one of these uh, one of these guys. I guess that kind of makes sense. Actually, not even, because Ash is level 3 fire, this is 3 fire. So, I would, I would have to go into Zangdora, yeah. Small World is dog shit, yeah. Don't play the card just because it searches anything. Yeah, unless you're playing Board Breakers as well, like Lava Golem Sphere Mode. I don't even know if you can search Sphere Mode effect uh, effectively. 
you would need to play like a level 10 monster. It's so hard to get there. But yeah, uh, extra deck, there's the black winged uh, assault dragon. But no black winged dragon, no Zulkin. And I can also see Cyrus Quantum Dragon. That is big thing. And I've never seen this many Link monsters in a Synchro deck. That is nuts. This guy is more than ready for D-Barrier. And again, bro, they're going uh, they're going bananas with the freaking Floodgates. 3 Heatwave, 3 Kaiser Coliseum. Konami did not address this problem whatsoever with the balance. They semi-limited Kaiser Coliseum and called it a day. Oh, and semi-limited SP, which everybody freaking plays one of. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh my, wow, what a huge nerf, huh? What a, what a crazy huge nerf. It doesn't change jack shit, it's insane. And then I've got, like, one comment of a guy saying, like, yeah, but uh, it's for the extravagance decks. Even the extravagance decks are playing two SPs. Or one, or one, because they don't even go into it. It's it's insane. Anyways, Runic, this is this deck's worst nightmare. Yeah, so that's the reason why, unfortunately, Runic is doing quite well. And they also had two There Can Only Be One before the bad list, and two goes in match, but I think this is staying at two. This card right here is called Synchro Zone. Let me just bring it up for you. Uh, so the card is a continuous trap card that basically prevents monsters from, or rather players from attacking, except with Synchro Monsters. And then if a non-tuner Synchro Monster is sent to a grave, you can revive back that monster and it becomes a tuner. And on your opponent's main phase, you can send Synchro Zone to the graveyard in order to quick sync. Yeah, it's not gonna matter, that, that effect. The, the, the reason why you're playing Synchro Zone is basically just so that your opponent can never attack uh, unless he's playing synchro monsters this is a pretty nasty floodgate against tenpai dragon because if they can't uh, declare attacks with their non-synchros they gotta find a way to go into this uh brimming something whatever the the first uh, dragon monster the level seven and then attack with that and then they can't really do much else afterwards they don't have enough attacks and it just hurts so much it's crazy because even threatening roar can almost be a floodgate against tenpai dragon they're just so battle phase uh, oriented that the amount of weaknesses they have is off the charts thunder of ruler is a card that it completely sk skips your opponent's next battle phase which also protects you from uh, evenly matched so if you want to play it safe you don't play threatening roar you play thunder of ruler instead it's a one for two package deal, right? Or rather two and one, whatever, you get the point. Another card that people keep recommending me is the Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. A level six or higher monsters that are special summon cannot uh, declare an attack or activate their effects. That is insane against Tenpai Dragon as well. They can't attack, they can't use their effects, they, they can't do shit. So yeah, they, they're basically just playing a link deck. They can go into SP in order to banish it. I guess that's one way to deal with it, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Again, if they don't have back removal, Runic is just game. It, it's just, it's such an annoying deck. You really only need like one of these floodgates with any Runic card. You go into Hogan and then their Duster, Lightning Storm, whatever it's, or Heavy Storm, it's not going to do anything. So they really need Cosmic Cyclone if they're going second. And if they're going first, your Kaiser Coliseum does not hurt them, like at all. So yeah, shoutouts to this guy, Heat Wave. <laughs> heat, heat Wave against a freaking Trap Heavy deck. I mean, it's barely a trap deck, but you can kind of consider the runic cards to be trap cards also. If you have three card of a demise, like, come on. So yeah, it's uh, pretty disgusting. I'm really happy that I'm not in the OCG. Again, more uh, Tenpai Dragon decklist with Phantasmi, but this time finally playing with Nibiru. So um, shoutouts to you, my man. I am proud. I am uh, quite proud of you. FA Dawn Dragster to negate spells and traps. Finally, an answer to runic. Because otherwise, if you got like no negates, then you're definitely gonna die. Eh, eh. And uh, yeah, break sword for no good reason. Okay, I, I guess it's like, oh, it's uh, my backup plan if I get uh, d bared for synchro. N nobody's even playing d bear anymore. I just realized that. I mean, I guess you can normal summon the hand shops if you got like literally nothing. But like, bruh, I can see it. Like if the extra deck is like literally that loose. Less than nothing interesting here. But again, I'm just uh, gonna reiterate the fact that they limited wanted and they semi-limited snake eye ash. This changes nothing. They can just add one one for one, which they're not playing. And then replace the two Wanteds that they lost with two more Diabelle Stars. They have the exact same amount of combo starters after and before the ban list. It's mind-blowing. But the pure Snake Eyes deck, it's gonna take a little hit. And Fire King, again, it's gonna take a boost because people are forced to play two Kirin instead of three. Again, thank you Konami for forcing people to just deck build better. Uh, Ritual Beast, very interesting deck list, but I'm not gonna pretend like I'm an expert on the deck. Uh, three continuous spells, this kind of feels like a lot, but it makes sense. You want as many starters as possible. Two Emergency Teleport, I mean, it's it's one of the bad ways to get into one of your uh, uh, Spiritual Beast monsters, but you, you kind of just need it, because then you Special Summon it, so it's like, 
it makes the combo just a little weirder but again it's the issue with ritual beast is that sometimes you have like too many normal summons and you don't really have like a good way of getting them into the field but this is the monster that just works um, through Veiler Imperm because it just lingers, right? So it's not like they can Veiler it. Like, once you normal summon, it's kind of like Evil Storm Caster and stuff. And then you got the, uh, I believe, in-hand effect of the new Spiritual Beast Tamer, Laura or something. They all have super complicated names. It's not my fault. And then, yeah, only one when Wendy, when Winda, Wendy, when something. I don't care about their names. The only names that I know are Kanahawk, Rampengu, Apelio, and then Dolphin Dude. And then, yeah, I don't really care about the, the extra deck either, the side deck, whatever. Fire King, I don't care. Ad Emancipator. Uh, I do not see any block dragons here. Never mind. I'm blind. Okay, cool. Very fun. And by fun, I mean not fun. Okay, Revoke. No, Fossil Fusion. <laughs> There's so many cards that just look identical to Polymerization. This one and Revoke Fusion are like the closest by far. But we can actually see like the, the, the orange things. They're, they're dinosaurs. And then, yeah, more voices voice. I don't really care. This time, this guy's smart. The, there's two deltas with the gammas. So if they go heat wave on your ass, then you know what to do. Math mech, Attic Nister. Wow, they still have the one circular. Yeah, actually, someone told me, so I, I kind of knew. Three Kaiser Coliseum. Yo, th they took two seconds to ban it in the TCG because, you know, they were not trying to, you know, make us suffer with this cancer. But in the OCG, they just they just let them just freaking rot in hell. And then Dragon Link with Spell Card Monster Reborn. It's a quick effect. I mean, it's a quick play Monster Reborn, but then you can't declare attacks or activate the effect of the monster that you stole uh, this turn. So it's, it's a cute card, I guess, kind of. I don't think you really need it. And uh, Dragon Link is like kind of nerfed to death. No, never mind. It's actually better than the TCG. They have three Chaos Space. And their Bestials being at one don't even change. Doesn't even change that much. One Lubellion, I guess, but three Saronier. And uh, yeah, three Striker Dragon as well. Holy shit. Whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah, damn. And then Runic, again, same deck list. This breakdown is uh, from the Philippines. I don't even think there is anything uh, different. Uh, again, more Hand Shops. And then three Droplet. No Phantasme, thank you. Horus Chimera, I really have to make a video on these cards. So this is the Abelzi, the original Sin or something. And then this is the Illusion Magician something. Uh, on the summon, it gets to search any Illusion monster. It's really good. Uh, so yeah, you can summon this, which is kind of like an anti-spell main deck. It's really scary. And it's an Illusion monster that you can revive back with a Tao the Great Chanter or something that you can foolish with the new Chimera Fusion monster. It's not even that new. It's the kind of deck that could afford to play like 20 billion hand shops, but now we're seeing... Way less hand shops, way more splashable engines like the Fright Furs and the Horus. 43 cards, and then 4, 7, 8 hand shops, that's it. Yeah, and then 2 Cobb of the Grave, 1 Cross out for the Ash, because Ash on Mirror Swords Knight hurts like crazy. But what I don't like about the extra deck is that he's playing the Horus engine, but he's not playing Galaxy as Photon Lord. If he got Horus, uh, sorry, Imsedi, as well as... And you know what? It makes sense, because if you got Imsedi and Mirror Swords Knight, you go Imsedi first, they're not gonna... They're definitely gonna Ash it. They don't know that you got Mirror Swords Knight as well. Uh, and they don't want you to get to Photon Lord. So they're gonna ash it. So you you re realistically don't need the Photon Lord in case the extra deck is really tight. So I can kind of see that. And people are playing Clara and Rushka in the extra deck because they need a way to deal with Secret Village. So this is a generic Spellcaster monster that you can summon using literally just any normal summon monster. But during the main phase 2 only. So you would have to wa waste your battle phase first. Um, everything makes sense, though. Fire King, I don't care. Uh, Tenpai Dragon, main deck Pankratops. Uh, it's still at one in the uh, OCG, okay. Uh, main deck, two Solemn Strike. What? Dino Wrestler Field Spell. Oh my god, that's really interesting. So this card has literally no effect on the field. The goal is to get this in the grave, and then you can banish it, and then summon Pankratops from the deck. That's really nice. I remember seeing that in Sky Striker, because people played, you know, terraforming with the Area Zero, so if they got Terraforming and Area Zero, they would go Terraforming into the Dino Wrestler Field Spell and then set it or activate it and then replace it with the new, uh, with, with Area Zero and then they can have that in the grave. So that's really nice and it allows you to place that rotation, but then you have to find a way to like destroy it. I, I guess you can do that with, I mean, Duster or the Graveyard Effect of the level 7 and the level 10. They both destroy cards. So that's actually really cool, a very nice innovation. And yeah, nothing of value in the uh, uh, extra deck. Uh, Silent Forcer again, I don't care. Ritual Beast. That's a really similar deck list as before. And then Rescuist, I also don't care. Salamangrate, very interesting. Okay, so there is a uh, no... Okay, yeah, no, there is the one cross out for the one Nibiru, but I mean, it's a one of anyway, so... <laughs> if you got if you get Nibiru in this deck, it's gonna hurt like crazy. A lot of one ofs 
My eyes are bleeding. One Jaguar, I agree. One Foxy, I can I can see that. One Spinny is painful because I, I just like this card. And then one Weasel, uh, that makes sense. One Mir, I think that's the name of the card. Okay. And then two Salamangra to Fire, which usually I don't like. But in this version, because he's playing three Lady Debug, it does make sense. You will get bullied to death for playing Lady Debug in the TCG, though. Like, nobody, nobody wants to play this card in Salamangrate. And then, yeah, we're also seeing Code of Soul. Uh, you can do some nice things with that. You can uh, link into Pyro Phoenix on the opponent's turn. Hey, if this video gets 1,000 likes, I'm making an updated Salamangrate combo video and deck profile tomorrow, literally. Make it happen. It can. And yeah, everything else in the extra deck, I don't really care. Uh, there is SP, but... Uh, yeah, good luck summoning that. It's not a fire monster. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's still uh, it's still worth playing. Nothing here, nothing here. Infernoid, okay. I also have to make an update on this deck because it is one of my favorite decks by a long shot. And hopefully it dodges the ban list. It, it, might, it might happen. But yeah, I, I don't really like the double Sejet. Uh, that's just not a necessity whatsoever. The Atondel is also garbage. Uh, Piatti is usually only really there for FTKs. So I also do not understand why this card is here in this build. Everything else makes sense, though. Uh, only one Diabell Star, I would play three. One Nibiru for the one of Crossout. This makes even less sense when you're playing 60 cards. And also Hand Shops and Infernoid. I, I'd, at this point, I would play zero Hand Shops and I would just play Board Breakers or cards like Triple Tactic Talent and Thrust. And also Thrust into Void Feast is really good, especially when you're playing like pure Void Infernoid, like all gas kind of deck. And yeah, I mean, the Void Blaze Up, which I really despise, I do not recommend playing the card. Uh, it has a gr broken graveyard effect that you cannot use right away. Uh, so usually you're always winning when you got the, the, that card access, uh, when you got access to that card, or when you're in a position to be able to use that card. And the actual on-field effect when you draw it is actually very underwhelming. So I don't like it, and Chimera Fusion, so you can summon Inferno Evil, or uh, the, <laughs> okay, yeah, if you, yeah, the, the, the Chimera, which is not even in the uh, Guardian Chimera, it's not even in the extra deck. So yeah, this card only summons one monster. That's it. Or Inferno Tierra, but good luck getting there. Uh, Radiant Kaiju Subversion, okay. Uh, Tenpai Dragon again, but nothing interesting. Uh, Pure Snake Eyes, again, this is this deck is kind of going to die off a little bit next format. And uh, no Snake Eyes Diabell Star. Wow, okay. Yeah, all right, sure. This is looking very similar to like a TCG deck list. In the OCG, when they got more cards than us. That just speaks volume as to, you know, how unnecessary some of the new cards are. But I really like the inclusion of the Diabelzi engine. And again, I I've already said this. I will make a video on this package very soon because I think it's overpowered. Anyways, we're almost done here. So voice is voice, Snake Eye. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, there's really no, I mean, yeah, there's nothing else that's really worth covering. I guess this Snake Eye decklist is playing uh, the one Flambridge and one Snake Eye Diabell Star and two Parallel Exceed with Infernal Flame Banshee because you can banish it with SP and then keep extending, climb into it like an Appaloosa and stuff. I am not a big fan, especially when you're playing other bricks like Dramatic Chase and Silvera. Actually, no Dramatic Chase, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I don't know about that. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.